First thing I want to do is give an explanation. And uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King, and the head of the church, who being ascended on high, has given gifts to his people uh, for the upbuilding and the equipping of the body of Christ. And we are meeting here this morning as a local Southern Baptist church to ordain Ryan Marcella uh, to the ministry of the gospel. Ryan, will you please rise and face the congregation just in front of that display? Now I'm going to ask Ryan to make an affirmation of faith. Ryan, do you believe the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith as disclosed in the books of the Old and New Testaments? Ryan, do you promise to seek the unity and the peace of this church? Ryan, do you affirm to uphold the doctrine, the worship, and the discipline of this church, and take your part in the administration of its affairs. Now, those who are representing the church, who were part of the ordination examination council, will you please come forward? Uh, Robert, uh, Roger, will you accompany that group? Please make your way to the front. I want you to lay hands on Ryan. Everyone get a hand on him. Congregation, please be upstanding. Eternal God who has established your church upon earth with the promise that the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. And who by the Holy Spirit has blessed and guided your church in all generations. We thank you this very morning for this church and for those who have served you in it down through the years. We praise you our God for Ryan who has been ordained to the office of minister of the gospel. Bless him with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Deepen his faith. Enable him, O oh God, to set a worthy example in his daily life. Give him wisdom and love in his servants to your people and to the world. And we ask this in the name and for the glory of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Congregation, please be seating. Brothers and sisters, lay down your arms. Ryan, I now declare that you have been ordained to the office of Minister of the Gospel. And we are delighted that you're here. And in token of that, each of the examination council will extend to you the right hand of fellowship. Now, it's, it's my privilege to bring a charge to uh, Ryan. This is customary. It's usually one to Ryan and one to the church, but, you know, we don't have all the time in the world, so we're just going to single Ryan out. And I, I do want to say it's, it's a joy and a privilege for me to uh, give the scriptural charge at Ryan's ordination. And I'd like to thank the search team actually, who were responsible for bringing them to our attention about two years ago. And uh, in the time that he and Hillary have uh, been with us, they've won our hearts. They've won our hearts and our confidence. And uh, one indication of that is a number of people who express appreciation to me and I'm sure to others for them both. And uh, not only that, Ryan and Hillary. 
but the regular intercession that goes on for you and Hillary through prayer on Wednesday night and at other times. And that's a good gauge of your standing within the church. Now, my comments are going to be uh, centered on 1 Thessalonians, the second chapter, and in actual fact, verses 1 through 12, not the whole chapter. And uh, Paul writes to the church this way. He says, you know, brothers, that our visit to you was not a failure. We had previously suffered and been insulted in Philippi, as you know. But with the help of our God, we declared, we dared to tell you his gospel in spite of strong opposition. For the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as men approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We're not trying to please men, but God who tests our hearts. You know we never used flattery, nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. We were not looking for praise from men, not from you, or anyone else. As apostles of Christ, we could have been a burden to you, but we were gentle among you. Like a mother caring for her little children, we loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you had become so dear to us. Surely you remember, brothers, our toil and hardship. We worked night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preached the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you, urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into the kingdom and glory. Now, Ryan, I, Sarah, I'm delighted to be here because I remember uh, my ordination very well. And the thoughts I'm going to bring to you, actually, uh, many of them came from my own ordination. And they've served me very well over the last uh, 37, 38 years. And my comments will be based on uh, Paul's words to the uh, Thessalonians. And that letter is generally thought to be the very first that Paul actually wrote. And the Thessalonian church was a typical church. It was a church that faced many challenges, faced with opposition from out, uh, from both Jews and pagans, and from within because the members were tempted to return to their old way of life. And quite frankly, some members were downright lazy. There were disputes about the Holy Spirit, and of course, there were one or two different opinions about the second coming. There were cliques in the church, and there was tension between the leaders and some of the members. And truth be told, if you were looking for the perfect church, that wasn't the one for you. But it was a typical church. It was a typical church. And Paul lays down certain principles which are applicable to the 21st century as the first. And I believe, Brother Ryan, these principles deserve your utmost attention and mine. And may I say in passing, because these are things that are important, and as a minister over all these years, I've had a first-hand experience of observing many things. This letter says so much about the church. And in my observation, Modern evangelical Christians tend to treat very lightly the doctrine of the church. As long as people claim to be converted, we think that's all that matters. And over the years, we've been so busy, so busy telling people that they're not saved by being members of a church, which of course is correct, but the result is we've been guilty of neglecting and belittling the doctrine of the church. 
We have failed to give significance to this concept of this church, the body of Christ, which is what the church is, as defined in Scripture. Now, a preeminent theologian, an Englishman as it happens, but nobody's perfect, wrote many years ago that to be a member of the Church of Christ is a privilege that is second only to our salvation. And I say to the brothers and sisters of this church, oh, that we all believe that. Oh, that we all believe that. In chapter 5 of 13, Ryan, Paul urges the church to esteem you highly. Highly for your work's sake, because you are, have been inducted and ordained into a ministry that God has called you to. And because of that work, not because of the title, but because of that work, Paul urges the church to esteem you highly in love. And that's the teaching of this letter. It's Paul urging the church to esteem those that God has set apart. But I want to say to you, Ryan, and I want you to take me seriously, the love and the loyalty of a church cannot be artificially manufactured. Merely because you lead music from this platform Sunday by Sunday and teach the, the youth week by week, and much less because you're now known as the pastor, In a very real sense, the love and the loyalty which is going to be given to you needs to be won and earned from you by those who will look to your leadership. It will be your quality of life, Ryan, the quality of your Christian character that will really inspire the love and the loyalty among God's people. And I think the sort of character which is required from you as a leader here is displayed by Paul. I'm not pulling it just out of the air. It's here. It's a concept that Paul himself sees as he reflects on his own conception of what leadership among Christian people, and particularly the Thessalonians, is. And so he writes in verse 10, You are witnesses, and so is God of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you. Paul wasn't anxious to please men. He was anxious to please God. But the funny thing is, at the same time, that didn't give Paul a reason to throw his weight about. Because he said in verse 7, we were gentle among you like a mother caring for her children. And then in verse 8, he speaks of the church and he says, you were so dear to us. You listening? Ryan, here's the way it will be. And I want you to remember this for all your ministry. You and Hillary will set the tone for the quality and the love and the loyalty in this church. It will be the quality of your Christian life that will have great influence on these people around you. And Paul emphasizes over and over again how important the quality of church leaders living is. Ryan, whether you realize it or not, as a minister of this church, you are what the old church talk was to a people of another generation. Very few people even wear a timepiece on their wrist these days. It's all on their, their telephone or whatever. But in years gone by, the timepiece that everyone took their time from was the old church clock. And Ryan, that's what you are today. For in a very real sense, everyone here will take their time from you. And you know, it's so easy Sunday by Sunday from your youth room lectern and from the pulpit to tell the youth and the congregation what they should do. 
But are you going to do what you're telling them to do? Will you be able to say, see how holy, righteous, and blameless my conduct is among you? Ryan, you'll be urging the young people and others to pray. Will you pray? You'll be telling us to be unreservedly yielded to God's will. Will you be? You'll be telling us to love others, even our enemies. Will you do that? You'll be telling us to be familiar with God's word. Will you be familiar with God's word? You'll be telling us to tithe. Will you tithe? You'll be telling us how to order our family life. Will you do the same? Robert Murray McShane died when he was 29. It's likely that he died of exhaustion. He was a powerful Scottish preacher of long ago. When he used to come into the pulpit, his congregation used to cry because of a sense of the presence and the holiness of God. And here's what he said. He says, it's easier to preach against a thousand sins in your congregation than to deal with one sin in your own life. Think about that. And we who are in ministry have no right to ask other people to do what we don't. And perhaps have no intention of doing. Ryan, we are the church clock. These people around us and those that know us, they will take their time from us. Now, B.F. Westcott, whom I've quoted a few times over the last few weeks and probably scores of times through my ministry, he was the Anglican Bishop of Durham in England in the early 20th century. And he said on more than one occasion to men who were entering upon Christian ministry, listen what he said, it's the will of God that our Christian ministry should rest upon our Christian life. Ryan, that's the crucial thing. The quality of our lives. Not so much our academic quality or the quality of people we've rubbed shoulders with or, or anyone else. The basic thing is the quality of our Christian life. And so I'll quote Westcott again. It's the will of God that our Christian ministry should rest upon the quality of our Christian life. Ryan, what we are and what we preach must go hand in hand. Otherwise, we shall soon discover that we're wasting our time and that our people have ceased listening to us a long time ago. Yes, says Paul, this is the example of a leader, a pastor, a teacher, a preacher to his people. You're very dear to us. They're very dear to us. Each and every one. You're very dear to us. And hopefully, like Paul, they may be able to say of us, we saw how holy, blameless, and just that we have behaved ourselves among these Now, Ryan and Hillary, may the Lord bless you abundantly in his ministry. And may he abundantly bless this church through you and Hillary.